Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I'm just jumping on today for a, a fast tutorial on um, the Floyd riff. And I don't mean Pink Floyd, I mean Floyd Kramer, the great country pianist. Now, as a pianist, I've known Floyd riffs um, for years, but I was just thinking about how they're useful for us as orchestral or epic composers as well. It's a way of embellishing simple triads that I think you'll find useful. Um, let's take a look. <laughs> A Floyd riff is a way of embellishing a triad. Basically, we're going to take a non-triadic tone and approach a triadic tone. Well, it sounds like a lot of jargon. One of the notes from the chords gets replaced for a moment with something else. It's, a it's an approach tone. In classical music, we'd call this an appoggiatura. Well, what does it look like on the screen? What does it sound like? Um, here. Easy to see how the D travels up to the E. It's a little embellishment. Here's another one. So with this one, I embellished the fifth of the chord, G. I went up and down again. So, so the classic thing might be something like this. It's a C chord in first inversion, C chord in root position, F chord in root position. It's a, a classic sound. Now, What's, what's great about that, of course, is simple chords animated. So what I wondered was, what would that be like in strings? I came up with a simple epic chord progression, A major, F major. Now here's an example of the way uh, that sounds just as triads. I'm inverting the chords to give them a little bit of life. Fun, but a little static. So my question to myself was, what if I gave those even more uh, excitement now? So here's the same chord progression, but I've taken the fifths and moved them up for a second and then back down again, or I've taken the thirds and approached them from below. Here, um, let's just listen. It's much more animated, and it sounds to me like the wonderful string writing from Aaron Copland's Rodeo. The, uh, the embellishments actually create melody, don't they? Let's look a little more closely at it. I'll open it up so we can analyze it. There's the violin on top. The violin by itself. Root, five, six, five, two, three, one, back to three. That's all on an A major chord. And then here I am in an F chord now at measure 10. Two up to three, down to one. Five up to six, back to five. It's all based around the chord tones with tiny little embellishments. And I've done the same thing in the viola part, um, just in a different place in the chord. Um, five, six, five, 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 six, five, two, three, two, two. The second up to the third. I've done the same thing in the cello. I've actually written um, a fairly intense cello part, big splash of an A chord, 6-5. Big splash of an A chord, 6-5. Uh, 
and here up to the third, and then the same thing on the F. Rolling everything again, let's slow it down a little bit so we can really hear the action of things. I was at 85 beats a minute before. Let's hear it at 70. This is going to be a little bit slow, but let's try it. <laughs> And because I've staggered the entrance and exit of the sounds a little bit, it's, it's fun. It's got a little bit of uh, dancey quality. Take it up again. I was at 85, so let's go back up to 90. The dancers will hate us. I gotta say that makes me really happy. Two simple major chords, A major and F major. I'm embellishing each triadic tone. Well, actually I'm embellishing the fifth and the third with notes either a whole step above, a scale step above, or um, a whole step below. In this case, uh, F sharp down to E or B up to C sharp for the A chord. And then for the F chord, G up to A or D back down to C. Fun and easy. I hope this was useful. Thanks. Like and subscribe. Comments on the video it turns out to be really, really uh, great for the life of the video. It's always a pleasure to do these for you. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.